Uh, my name is Hazel Umtech, and I work with the YES program, Yakima English Spanish, and it's under Title Seven. Okay. What are the goals of your program, and who does it serve? The program is to serve uh, the young Indian students or other students that are interested in our Yakima Indian language. And what do you hope that they will get from the program? A lot of the students are learning a lot from the program, and they seem to enjoy the Yakima Indian language classes each day. They look forward to it. Why do you think there was a need for this program to begin with? What sort of need did you see uh, when you came up with the program? Well, I'll speak on behalf of the Indian families. A lot of them don't speak uh, their Indian native tongue to their children, and it's beginning to be one of the forgotten languages, which it shouldn't be. So this program helps the students on the Yakima language. Mm -hmm. What about uh, building of a better self-concept by understanding where they've come from, their own culture, and their own language? Well, I'll speak again on the little students that I work with. I've told them never be afraid of uh, what you are or what race you are, and we've noticed uh, vast change in the students where they would come to school with their moccasins or their little beaded hair ties and their chokers and things that they were proud to be an Indian. They weren't ashamed. What about the non-Indian children? Uh, same way with the uh, non-Indians. They, they, they are either borrowing little hair ties, especially the girls, They'll borrow the little girl's hair ties, and they'll wear them. So would you say that the program has made for better understanding and has put the Indian children on a more equal footing with the other children in the school? Uh, yes, I think it has. Could you say that? Just say that uh, pretty much what I said. Uh, yes. Uh, it, uh, has made the little Indian students to be aware of who they are, and I think they're very proud, and they mingle with all other students. Uh, I don't think there's any students that, that are any better than the Indians. Okay. Can you tell me how the program got started? And you said something about that, Swin. So just tell me how it got started and when. Well, this was about four years ago. Mr. McEwen had uh, started only it was with the Spanish, when uh, the Spanish children were having a hard time with their English. And then this is how the three languages got started on the YES program. What is your involvement in the program? What do you do for the program? Well, I'm teaching the Yakima Indian language and uh, what few written words that I have, I work with that uh, with the children, and they all seem to enjoy it very much. Tell me a little bit about how you use culturally related and culturally derived material, say from the Indian experience in the teaching of the program, and how you develop these. A lot of uh, the work that I have, I've developed on my own. And I've introduced a lot of things like the, the animals and the, their clothing, their Indian clothing, and their food, their Indian food, right on down the line, what they're supposed to know. Mm -hmm. And say when you start out to develop some materials, you develop them because there isn't anything to use to begin with, right? No, I've uh, developed a lot of my own work and I'm still working on them yet. Okay. How do you decide, uh, let's say you want to teach a concept uh, of some sort, like numbers, what would you, wh how would you go about 
developing a set of materials then to teach numbers that had relation directly back to the Yakima culture? Well, like in from one to ten or from any numbers. Well, I make a ditto and then I run off all these papers and then uh, they either recognize the Indian written numbers and from there they can read the Indian written numbers. Mm -hmm. What has been the effect of the program on the people that it serves? And tell me how the children have reacted to it and how their parents have reacted to it. You mean the non-Indians? No, the Indians. Oh, the Indians? Yeah. Or the, <clears throat> the Indian people, the parents of the children, uh, they seem to be more involved in school. They uh, feel like they're part of the school. And some had even come into the program. And whenever we have a cultural event, well, they all seem to take part, which is very good. Do they come in, uh, do the parents say of some of the children in the program come in from time to time and serve as, as resource people? Uh, yes, they do. How, give me some examples of, of that. Well, if uh, they need someone to come in, oh, well, to display our Indian artifacts or tell stories, they come in and they show their Indian artifacts or they tell Indian stories to the, to the students. How many non-Indian children do you have participating in the ESP? I think I have about five or six it's that they're whites, and I have about four Spanish, and I have one little Oriental girl. And how, how do they pick up on the program? Uh, they're really good. They're really interested in it. Has the program been accepted by the white community? Well, it brings a better understanding. They, s they seem to be aware of uh, the Indian ways and the habits, and especially if their child is uh, in the school. Would you like to see the program continued and expanded? Uh, yes, I would, but it seems to be from year to year basis. A lot of times it is that way with grant kinds of things. Do you think if the funding ran out for the program that the school system would take it over and continue it? I really wouldn't know. Yeah. I wouldn't know anything about that. Okay. Tell me a little bit about how you conduct one of the classes that you do. How long it is, uh, what time of day it happens, what kind of materials you might use. Just talk about a typical day when the kids come in. Well, when the children first come in, well, we have our objectives that we have to reach. And I introduce each objective to the child. So this will go on a whole school year. And, and then they make their own little books out of different things, and which keeps them real busy. And they seem to just catch on real fast. Is, uh is the YES program related to things other than languages? For example, is, is there a component of uh, Indian culture and social studies and history and <coughs> other things that are taught in the school? Uh, well, in my class, all they learn is just strictly the language. And other, when they go back to their rooms, well, then they, they do have those other subjects, yes. OK. Grayson, did you have any more questions? The only thing I can say is, if you, if you, Hazel, if you could just talk a little bit more specifically about, let's say, one or two of the uh, curriculums that you've developed yourself, mm -hmm. and just tell us about it. Uh, you, you, you mentioned counting, some things you used in counting. You also w were mentioning, I think, uh, dresses or, or Indian dress. Could you tell us more specifically about, you know, what this curriculum is? How is it structured? Well, the reason I developed my own was because I didn't have uh, any materials to go by. And from there on, I developed, I started sketching all my own things. And I got a little scrapbook and an art sketchbook. 
and from there I start sketching uh, various things that they were going on, like their animals and their clothing and parts of their body and their weather and their household things and oh, just various things. I start developing all these things on my own and now I'm starting on another book. But I have these flashcards that I'm working on now that Anita and I are working on and it's just all on our own. That's all I have to say. And what do they do with these pictures? Well, as a rule, I run off a ditto and they, they make their own little book of animals and their clothing and numbers and uh, food and various things. And, but these other flashcards, when it's time for me to test them, well, then I would have to tell them and ask them, can you tell me what is what? And then this is how I developed all these uh, other material. Okay. Are there any other things that you use to teach uh, the language other than the book and having to make their books and the flashcards? Well, orally. And how, what, what do you do? Do you have like a... Uh, stand up and count from one to ten, or do you have them tell stories, or what kind of exercise do you do with them orally? Uh, yes, they do their numbers. First, they just uh, wrote from one to ten, and then from there on up to one hundred is orally. And then, but they have to recognize the numbers from twenty on to one hundred, and if they get up to one hundred, then they go on up to five hundred. And then if they complete 500, then they will go up to 1,000. And they seem to be grasping that so fast. And I also teach the students on the rhyming words that come close to where they can remember. So this is how I work with them. How did you happen to retain the Yakima language, whereas a lot of the other people in your generation didn't? Well. I'll say that uh, English is my foreign language because I was brought up strictly all Indian. I didn't know a word of English when I had gone to first grade and it was very hard for me. So I've remembered my Indian language all my life. Do you speak Yakima in the home? Uh, yes, I've e I'm even teaching my two little granddaughters and they understand. Do you do any uh, storytelling? Uh, yes, I'll tell uh, legends that I know of my own that was taught to me by my father. And I usually tell two little legends to the students, and that's about the chipmunk and the raccoon, how they got their marks. And they uh, seem to be very interested in those. But tell these in English or in Yakima? In English. But there's always a meaning to all the legends that are told and it's either telling you how to listen or to mind so that you wouldn't get hurt or get in trouble. Okay. Well, I'd like for you to describe your position in the project and what you do and then talk a little bit about what this YES project is all about, okay? Just tell me directly to the camera. Now? Yeah, go okay. right ahead. My name's Anita Totus Walsey, and I'm a teacher's aide with Hazel Umtich in, uh, for the Yakima Indian language. I don't know too much about the YES program because I just got with it about this is my third week, and uh, I was asked about the job for the Yakima Indian language, and I jumped at the chance to get in with it because I'm really interested in Indian language. I was raised um, talking Indian language, and that's all I've known when I was little. And like Hazel, I had a hard time learning how to talk English. And when I was told about the job, I wanted to get involved because it, it really is an interesting job. And to see the little kids talk in their own native tongue is really something to see the little kids talk. And I wanted to get into it and, and 
uh, I got two of my kids going to school there now because I want them to learn a lot of the Indian language. It's got to be carried on. I mean, it's fading away. And it really is a good program. And to see the children talk in Indian is really something. Because I got three other kids at home that don't know nothing about Indian language. And, and to see the little ones go home and brag at the big kids, it's really interesting. What do you think the value would be for a, for a child, say, in elementary school? What is the value to that child of being able to speak his own language and knowing his own history when he's operating essentially in a different, in a different situation, say the white situation? Why is it good for an Indian child to, to know his own self? Well, I got a lot of uh, nephews and uh, nieces that don't know how to speak English at uh, Indian at all, and it's kind of hard for them. And to see your own people, your own young ones, to be ashamed of themselves, I think it would help a lot in. Uh, elementary and high school to have themselves known what they are and not to be ashamed and, and hide it and try to be like a white man. And I think it, it'll help them a lot in school and in college to know that they are Indian. Watching the, uh, the white kids, say, who are in the YES program or the white kids in the school who are not in the YES program, how do they react to the Indian kids who can speak their own language? Well, I'm really interested in one girl. Uh, she talks the Indian language. And when Hazel told me about her, I was really surprised because she really can talk Indian. And uh, one day she came to me. And with my boy going to school there, and he's got braids. and. He was kind of scared to go because he got the reaction that the white kids would make fun of him, like they did when he first went to another school. And when she asked me if he's always had raids, and I said yes, and she said it was really interesting to see a kid going to school with long braids. And this was really good to see because, well, when he first went, they used to make fun of him. But to, to go to a school where the kids understand him and know that what he is, and not to make fun of him, that's really something to see in a white girl like that. Because usually they used to make fun of you when they didn't understand you. And I think this program alone is helping a lot with her to understand the Indian people. Mm -hmm. how, do you, uh, how do you use things from the Yakima history and the Yakima language and the Yakima culture in teaching in the YES program. What kinds of things do you use? Oh, you mean in material or materials, just... Materials, basically, or, or also the, the basic information, legends, stories. Oh, well, I think Hazel got into that more than, than I, I wouldn't have really nothing to tell. She told it all, except that, like, she told the she tells them the legends about the, well, like she said about the raccoon and the chipmunks. And I've noticed that uh, mostly, like the white girls, they want to know more about different animals. Because they ask Hazel, uh, uh, Mrs. Umtuch, can you tell us another legend about an animal? And they're, they really are interested. And there is a lot yet to tell. We just never got into it yet. For the future, do you think it would be a good thing if this program was continued and maybe expanded into more grades than just K through three? I think it would be. I think it would be really wonderful to have uh, the older kids know their Indian language. Um, well, like I told you, I had other kids at home that uh, can understand words here and there but don't know a lot of the animal names. And I got one, uh, she's in the sixth grade. And the material that I bring home, I take al all the material that I made along that Hazel had, and I take it home. And the girls and the boys take the material and they try to teach themselves. 
and they, they're interested. And that's why I take the material home, because the older kids, and they have the little kids teach them the animals. Uh, somebody mentioned earlier, I forget who it was, that sometimes the parents of some of the children in the YES program also try to learn the Yakima language. They didn't learn it when they were small, but they go back and they try to learn it now. Mm -hmm. Yes, there's a lot of parents that don't know uh, the Indian language. And uh, I think uh, it'd be nice, you know, it, it is nice that they're all trying to understand and they're trying to get involved too with the kids because it is a good program. What kinds of problems do you run into in administering a program like this? Or do you have problems in terms of the amount of time that you have with the students, uh, or the lack of materials, or the lack of space? And things like that? Well, the materials, like Hazel said, uh, she's been making the materials. Uh, well, like you see the, uh, well, white people, they have the Peabody kits, and Hazel's been making the material on her own. and making flash cards and number cards so that uh, we'd have this for the school year for the kids. And um, it's hard because you have to do things on your own because you can't, you can't go out to town and buy these things. You have to make them. You've talked to other people, say parents of children in the program, Indian children, and also other people in the tribe itself. How do you think the tribe feels about this particular program? Well, well, my father wasn't too, my father is, uh, you know, the tribal chairman. And uh, really, he, he, he